good afternoon and a warm welcome to parents, carers uh, and children who have joined us for this webinar uh, around uh, how we kind of stretch all of our students, including the more able at St. Michael's. I I'm Mr. Daly. I'm one of the assistant principals and I'm, perhaps I've would seen or well, you've seen me around the college today and on Monday if you are uh, if you manage to get in for our kind of open days and open evenings uh, and the kind of running format for this afternoon will be. A very shortly you'll be hearing from our principal, Mrs. Corcoran, who'll be just giving you a kind of brief introduction and welcome uh, to the college and just explaining how we kind of look after our, our more able co cohort. Uh, and then you'll be hearing from Mr. Magnoff, who is kind of the lead on the more able and how we stretch and challenge students uh, within the college. And then we'll be coming back to myself and I'll be kind of sharing. Thank you to those parents and carers who sent in some questions. You'll see on the right hand side that we have a, a chat facility. If you've got any questions that you'd like to ask this afternoon, please feel free to put those in the chat and we'll do our most our, our best to answer them. Um, and at the end of Mr. Magnoff's kind of presentation, we'll do a quick brief question and answer session and then we'll come back to myself and I'll kind of summarize uh, what we've gone through this afternoon and just give you some kind of information about where you can get any support in uh, information you might need regarding this or the future events that we've coming up uh, in the next couple of uh, over the next week or so. So I'm going to hand over uh, to Mrs Corcoran now. Thank you. Welcome to St Michael's Catholic College webinars. As part of our open days this year we're offering a series of webinars so that parents and carers can find out more about specific aspects of the college. So today our webinar is about how we stretch and challenge all pupils at St Michael's and Mr Magnoff, who's an Associate Senior Leader and a Specialist Leader in Education, is going to talk about what we do and his work in leading that. Thank you, uh, Mr Corcoran. Uh, I'm, I'm now going to hand over to Mr Magnoff, as I said, who's kind of uh, one of our assist Associate Assistant Principals who looks after um, our more able students. Good afternoon, Mr Magnoff. Good afternoon. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Mr. Magnoff. Um, as mentioned, I am uh, Associate Assistant Principal. I'm in charge of the of Challenge and More Able. I'm also Specialist Leader of Education and some other things. Um, today, I'm just really going to talk to you about um, our provision and what that will mean for for your for your children, but also not just for the More Able, but for all of the students across the school. Um, we. The, the thing to remember in all of this is that the challenge runs throughout our school in everything that that happens in every minute of every lesson uh, in every subject um, challenge is embedded in everything that we do challenge is not something that is only meant for uh, the the top the top few percent of the cohort we challenge is something that we have worked for many years now to uh, to embed across the curriculum and and each um each subject has different provision for, for different challenges in different ways. Um, every every half term, each uh, subject in each year group follows a um, follows a, a particular scheme of learning, um, and the um, the the extracurricular stuff really, and the more able provision that we do provide is actually just a, a bonus that we we put on top. We do provide lots of opportunities for our students and. But the thing to remember is, regardless of whether students are, um, are, are nominated to be amongst our more able cohort or not, and by the way, that, that varies depending on, on subjects, um, challenge is something that is inherent to everything that we do here. There is, no, there is no situation in which children are not provided with challenge and stretch across the curriculum. Um, we do, however, have bandings. Um, your your child will will may find themselves in different uh, classes and different groups for different subjects. They might find themselves in X or a Y band uh, for maths or for science, and they might find themselves with a different lettering uh, for humanities and other subjects. Now, these uh, th these groupings are fluid and they change uh, they change by by year, but also it doesn't necessarily mean that they are doing a different, um, they have access to a different curriculum. It does, there are some opportunities available for some students. For example, we offer Latin and philosophy for some of the students that have been identified as more able. 
Um, however, really, these are just extra opportunities for some students. Across the vast majority of subjects, there will be um, the same content is delivered uh, and the same challenge and opportunities will be available to all. Um, our challenge in principle starts with pulling down content from A-level. Uh, everything that they do towards, we have tremendous success at GCSE and A-level over the years. And the success that we have is built on preparing them over several years for um, the top level A-level um, um, possibilities. We have many students that, that go to Oxford and Cambridge every year. And the work is done slowly over time. However, it's not just about teaching the mark schemes of A-level and GCSE down to key stage three. It is actually about trying to go beyond the, um, the requirements of the exam scheme. Um, we teach, for example, uh, through the exams, trying to bridge the gap to university study in most of the things that we do. We teach the philosophical principles behind our subjects and then show the, the students how they can use their high level uh, knowledge and understandings to meet um, the requirements for various exams. Uh, at A-level, we, we have also an honours pathway. We have a special scheme for the most able identified by that stage who um, we think have, um, have been out, who have a chance of studying perhaps at Oxford or Cambridge or other Russell Group universities. For those students, we offer the possibility of taking four A-levels. Um, this is an opportunity for some students, but, not, but perhaps not for all of them. But it's something either way or depends on what they want to do at that stage. Um, we provide opportunities across uh, across our sixth form for different students to be um, primed for different things, depending on what they want to pursue at university or which apprenticeships they want to do or what they want to want to do um, after this, um, after post school life. They um, we help them to make decisions about their choices to make sure that they have uh, the greatest platform um, to show off their abilities. Um, this is not necessarily something that will be obvious to students when they're when they're when they're in, engaged in their lessons. But an awful lot of thought has gone behind everything that goes into what we do. Everything, all of those schemes of work, all of the curriculum maps, they are for a purpose. It's not just learning one thing after another with for no reason. All of them are built into wider and deeper understandings about their subjects, and. For, for them to be usable, usable in the real world around them. Um, on top of that, within each class, there are micro uh, strategies that are in place. Every minute of every lesson is deliberately designed. It may not always be apparent to students. And in fact, often that's, uh, that's where the best teaching happens. If you can deliver the lessons in such a way that, uh, that the students are not necessarily aware of, of, um, of the process through which they are being uh, having their experiences expanded. So all of our teachers at the school are thoroughly, um, thoroughly educated and trained in, um, in all of the, the, the cutting edge pedagogy available. Uh, things, if you were to go into, a, into our classes at the school, you would see things like pace. There would be a, a variance of pace depending on, um, but depending on topic, depending on class, depending on, on, um, on challenge. Um, different tasks might be might be applied for different students at different times in different ways. Um, and by the way, it shouldn't be expected that that students should always be operating at the very top level of each thing that they do. It's normal for students to go up and down um, in their experiences as they take on board different understandings. And the, the road to the top of the, the hill is often meandering and varied for different students because they are all individuals and the teachers are experts not only in their field, but in their in developing relationships with their students and understanding um, how to pull and push and challenge their students uh, the best. Students may not even even be aware that they are maybe doing it to different types of tasks or different types of um, of challenge. Uh, questioning questioning is embedded in everything that we do. You would get open questions and closed questions and different targeted questions. There is no student that will be able to hide in any of our class classrooms. There is, in general, a no hands up policy. There is a, all students are engaged at once and we don't leave anyone behind. Um, 
two things that you will definitely be aware of uh, if you were to um, to spend time in our classrooms would be our dedication to metacognitive strategies and visible challenge. Now, with metacognition, uh, this is about getting students to um, to reflexively be aware and self-aware of how they learn and how they get their knowledge. This means that they will be specifically in different subjects, they will focus on different things. They may focus on how to summarize um, uh, text and knowledge. They might focus on labeling. They might focusing on how to question things. They might focus on, um, on evaluation and analysis. Um, but they will, will have a, um, we develop strict independent learning study skills um, and thinking about thinking. Also, in each class, you will see that there will be a visible challenge. That This means that, that although challenge is embedded in everything that we do in different ways, the, the students will have a signposted challenge task, uh, multiple signposted challenge tasks throughout their lessons. This means that they, they, that they will know, they should be able to answer in every class, what is it, what is the challenge? What is the extra thing for us to be doing? And they will have an understanding of that. Those things are all the bedrock behind everything that we do. Um, as far as the extracurricular uh, provision, these, this is really the icing on the cake. All students that come through St. Michael's are exposed to the very cutting edge uh, of pedagogy uh, and uh, inclusive of challenge and stretch to try and, and make them ready for, uh, for their post-school lives and to bridge the gap to university study. But these extra things, they are also some of the more eye-catching things. We do work with King's Scholars. King's Scholars is a uh, is working with King's University London uh, with their metacognition unit, where we provide for the most able students um, with uh, pupil premium funding to specifically start to engage with concepts about their learning and perhaps identifying some students that may not necessarily always have considered university, but to to get them grounded in in um, in the environment and to to give them as many options as we can. We also work with the Brilliant Scholars uh, Charity. Now, this is a, an organisation that sets uh, students up um, with a, a PhD um, a student who is an expert in a particular field who does a series of um, university style uh, interventions with. Um, with students over the course of a term, and then they go to a uh, they go to um, a Russell Group University on two trips to see what things are like, and they get a graduation ceremony. It builds up to them doing a university style uh, essay. Um, we we go to Bloomberg. Bloomberg is, is a um, is a, an initiative to do with our foreign languages section where um, students who are more able in languages go and receive training at Bloomberg at the city. We have house competitions where, where challenge and stretch is extended beyond the curriculum where they get to uh, students get to explore different types of histories, they get to explore the, the local area, they get to explore different types of music and different art and to take the, the basis of what they're learning and the curiosities that are ignited in class and give them the platform with which to explore those things. This also uh, bleeds into things like the big ideas lectures. Now, this has uh, been uh, traditionally something we've done at sixth form, and we're extending that out across the college where we get uh, world leading academics and professionals to come and talk to our students in, in lecture style theatres um, about um, about specialist areas, about art history, about the French Revolution, about um, about all kinds of things. Uh, elephant group, we work with the elephant group to give you know, students um, practice at interviews for Oxford and Cambridge. And, and we have had tremendous success uh, getting students to that, to that level. It's not just about getting them ready for their exams and hot housing them for that. It's about expanding them to give them internal enrichment to make sure that they are ready beyond the requirements of the exams. We are seeking to do both things, to make sure that they get the qualifications they need to go where they need to go, but also to, to give them a love of learning for lifelong learning. Obviously, we also have huge uh, opportunities in music, drama and sports. We have international and national level athletes that are competing in different uh, different competitions. Our music provision, uh, we have many students who are now uh, practicing to sing and perform at St. Paul's Cathedral and will hopefully be going on trips next year um, on uh, to sing at different places, including Italy. 
obviously dependent on what happens over the next um, the next uh, period of time. But that that's an overview of of our provision. But just to reiterate that challenge is something that runs through everything that we do. Um, right from year 11, we don't have a differentiated um, curriculum for, uh, for um, year seven. We don't particularly differentiate by set. The, that some classes are set and there are some opportunities that are available to some of the students, for example, in Latin and philosophy. But challenge is something for all students. And at year seven, it's not that we give them less challenge. It's just that we teach them to the top, but we may need to take a little bit more time about embedding conceptual ideas, about evidence and empathy and significance and whatever is apparent to each subject. So I am very happy to field any questions that you may have. Um, I will feed back to Mr. Daly. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Magnoff. So just, just to summarise here, um, essentially, as you said, every student is we try and push every student to reach their capabilities, whatever that may be, in whatever subject. Is that correct? Absolutely right. There's, there's, we provide for every single student that's here, and. Every student is, is individual and has different needs and different requirements. And for each of them, we are stretching them for as far as they can possibly go. All of them are capable of, 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 of accessing the same material. It's just that some of them will need different types of strategies to get them to the same place and maybe a different time and different support. Thank you. Um, uh, thanks uh, to parents and carers and, and uh, students that have joined us. And I hope that has given you a kind of overview of how we kind of stretch and challenge the students uh, within St. Michael's. Uh, I did say at the beginning of this presentation, thank you for the questions that you have sent in. I've got a few that I can see coming at the moment and um, hopefully Mr. Magnoff, I'm sure, will be able to feel some of those questions you said. I've just got one or two that came in previously, Mr. Magnoff. Um, I'm just going to put this up on the screen for you. Uh, how, how does technology support high achievers and all achievement within the college to, to kind of paraphrase what you said earlier so in the last in the last two years with the 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 separate challenges of lockdown it has afforded us some opportunities and it has allowed us to significantly develop um the our, our provision through technology so it's become much more easy for us to to get students involved in lectures and summer schools uh, weekly so that we have uh, we use a Google uh, classroom learning platform and this is uh, not just for the submission of work and for the for the sharing of uh, of, of exercises and vision materials and, and, and libraries, although it can do that too, so that they don't necessarily need to come in. Um, but it is also about um, providing opportunities and extension opportunities, for example, attending online lectures um, and other opportunities. It is something that we are, we are working towards continuously, um, but uh, it means that no child should have to miss out on any opportunities, regardless of what happens uh, outside the school's control. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, this is another question I think quite relevant. Uh, what can I do as a parent to, to support a student who shows particular aptitude in any subject? What can parents do and carers do to do? So, so studies have confirmed that, uh, that the number one uh, the number one thing that makes a difference to students um, in this area is uh, is parental support. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean um, checking over their answers and, and, and becoming an expert in these things okay. yourselves, but it is about showing an interest and providing them with a space, if you can, to do the work that needs to be done, to show an interest in their work, to, mm. if possible, take them out, take them out of their, of their, of their habitual, maybe cultural or local environments or familial environments and showing them. We're really lucky as a school to be located where we are on the banks of the river. And as, as, as much as we can, we take them out and we take them to down onto the, the Thames to look at archaeology. We take them, uh, teach them how to read the landscape of the buildings and change over time to take them to experience different things that they may not know about, to take them to a museum, to take them um, to, to, to a concert. It's, there's, there's lots of things that can be done and can be done 
uh, without necessarily incurring expense. So really it's about taking an interest and to encourage them to to, to see the world and to, to move away perhaps from um, from maybe um, from from data screens. Okay, perfect. Um, and this question related, I think you kind of answered this, in, you did answer this in your presentation, but homework in terms of the, the more able, or to stretch and challenge, I'm going to again uh, paraphrase the question, uh, to stretch and challenge all the students. How, how is that accommodated from my point? So it, this is all done uh, by subject. Each subject has uh, has a, it's, it's also connected to how we, we identify uh, the more able because it's not just that we have a, a list of students that we receive from Key Stage 2 or even one that we d decide on uh, at the start of Year 7 or even one that we decide on at the start of every year. It's a fluid thing and it is also triangulated by, uh, by SATs, by CATs, by sure. um, by individual nominations um, by their subject teachers that know them best students will be good at different things in different ways yeah so no matter who they are it's not as if there is a list of only 10 percent of students that only have access to all of the opportunities it will also be uh, determined by subject and by subject they will offer stretch and challenge as 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 is, is necessary for each student there will be stretch for all students and yet for those that that are that prove themselves to, to have a capacity to do more work, there is no end of work that can be done. There's no it depends only on their curiosity and their resilience to do the work. Um, so there, there may be more work given, maybe specific work given, maybe yeah. specific research, research being given, but it, it depends by subject. Thank you. Uh, this, this is, thank you for the question that's coming just coming right now. Um, at what year do you start? What year do we start exposing students to engage with those those partnerships that, that you mentioned in your presentation, Mr. Magnol? Uh, right from the beginning. So, exactly, yeah. So the the, the brilliant club, um, we have already identified some students to work with the the, the, the brilliant scholars program um, from year seven. That's starting in uh, in November now, and will run for this first term. And there, so there is opportunity from the beginning for all students. Um, and we run it throughout all key stages and um, and for all students. And that includes the King's Scholars Programme as well? Absolutely, it? absolutely. Yeah. So there's, all students are engaged with our partners from the start, be it within our voices, be it with King's Scholars, be it with the brilliant, brilliant scholars. Yeah. And we are expanding all the time. I can, I can add to that and say that today we just started our Global Scholars Programme, which is 35 students working across schools across the world on a specific topic this year, it was how do we make sure that we have a sustainable food chain? They're working on kind of technology. At the end of the year, they'll get together with the partner schools, remotely, of course, um, and to talk about how they, what they've done to kind of support their communities. So it's a really enriching program that helps the students to really work, work with technology, work with each other, and see schools from a, a different part of the world and engage with them and find out culturally what's happening there. So it's a wonderfully enriching project and your uh, sons and daughters will be able to get involved in those those types of things if you decide obviously to send them to St Michael's in the future. I agree. I, I think that this is uh, this is part of the secret of our success really, is, is that we, we get the students engaged and um, and they and they buy into the 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 culture of the school, whereby we get we afford them cultural capital and opportunities yeah. all the time. So that it actually they are they are in the end self-motivated, self-started, independent learners, and they do it all the way through. So by the time they get to sixth form, it's a, they are they are a well-oiled and curious machine, eager to learn about life and subjects. And we absolutely can, it starts right from the beginning. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Uh, this one uh, you you did again, Mr. Magnoff, kind of say this, but how do we support a child with an EHCP in terms of stretch and challenge? Well, it depends because all the children are, are different and have different needs yeah. and we have uh, we give all the support that we can to all the students depending on what they need. Uh, I don't know if they, I think there's a there's a talk later on from the SEND department yeah. and they can be more specific about provision. But uh, but all students get access to the same stretch and challenge. They, it's, it's not a it, there's not a separate curriculum necessarily. Uh, for for children with EHCP, that may that may vary by subject, but on the whole, they, they have 
access to the same curriculum and we try and get them to the same place. It may just be that they need a bit more support and they may need to take a little bit more time, but that's okay. Perfect. Uh, could I just, uh, uh, parents and carers, next Monday at 2 p.m. we have a similar um, webinar like this one where we'll be, you'll be able to speak to Ms. Freeguard, who is the kind of in charge of uh, the SEN department and inclusion, and she'll be talking through the kind of strategies that we use within the SCN department to support all children and make sure that they obviously as well reach their potential. And this, this is one that Mr. Magnafon, how do you support students with confidence in relation to public speaking? It's such an important uh, kind of factor in, in, in any kind of career profession that you're thinking of going into? Well, it's uh, this is um, this is an important thing to do, and it's no matter who you are or how confident you might be in in day to day life, it is it is a scary thing to get used to, and it is it's it's an important thing. Um, we do it in a variety of ways. It's something that's embedded in the learning a lot. It's a, we, we get students to prepare presentations and research. There's different ways of assessing students. It's not just through essay writing, although obviously that's a central part of many subjects, which is also vital to their, their ability to, um, to get on uh, in, in, in society. But, you know, just as an example, yesterday we had our, uh, we had our inaugural um, deputy head boy and deputy head girl elections. Um, it is, uh, and each um, each uh, candidate was required to give a speech in front of their peer group and towards teachers to lay out their manifestos and their ideas for how to improve and to be engaged in in, uh, in steering school policy. And they did a great job. It is not something that comes easily to everybody, but it's something that gets better with time and with sincerity and trust. And if we have are able, and I think that we have created an environment in which they trust us and feel safe. Then it's something that you build on as you, as you get through, and um, I think we do a good job with that. Perfect. Just going back to the other question now, can you see the link is on the uh, screen at the moment for our, our inclusion uh, webinar? So please feel free. That will be sent out to all parents and carers. So please tune in next uh, Monday. Uh, going back to Mr. The previous question, um, which was there. With the public speaking, I think I, I, on top of that, in in every lesson there are opportunities for the students to do presentations, aren't there, Mr. Manuel? Right from year seven, so it's absolutely build on right from the beginning, and so by the time they get to that position where they're looking of trying to be head boy or head girl, or head girl or deputy head boy girl, they've already gained those skills, those confidence. If any of you were there this afternoon, uh, this morning, and, and you managed to hear from my head boy and head girl. You've just seen how eloquently and how articulate they are, and that is a skill they picked up right from the beginning uh, in relation to all the programs that Mr. Magnoff has said that we do within the school and the extracurricular activities to make sure those that, that skill, all those skills are embedded fully. I should also say that we um, we also run a, a successful debating society, which runs for Key Stage 7 all the way up to, uh, to Year 13. We enter competitions, and the big part of that is to is to educate students in public speaking, and not just saying anything in public speaking, but in in saying what you mean and meaning what you say, and supporting what you say with evidence, not just having opinions, but having considered thoughts that um, and that, and you test claims against evidence. Perfect. You can see the question there from uh, one of our parents, Kara. Thank oh, you. Yes. Uh, just saying, you know, do we offer Sorry. different clubs? And, well, no, no, it's fine. I just put it up while you were speaking. <laughs> went into it anyway. Um, thank you, Mr. Magnoff. Um, I think that if, if there are no more questions from our, our parents and carers, I'd just like to say a thank you for joining us this afternoon. Um, and I hope that has been useful in giving you a kind of overview from uh, Mr. Magnoff of how we stretch and challenge not just the most able in the college, but every single student so that they reach their full potential at the end. And that is across subjects across disciplines and as Mr Magnus said giving them that cultural capital that they can take on after they leave us in St Michael's at the end of year 13 and being able to go to university or high level apprenticeships or into the world of work but with the confidence that well I've built up those skills I've been through this kind of process I know how to speak when I, I'm in an interview situation I'm able to do a presentation because I've done loads of them in my time at St Michael's and that's what we're trying to get our students involved in so that by the time they reach that stage of their uh, their lives 
those things are, uh, I can imagine, I don't know for yourselves, I remember at school, I, I can't remember ever speaking, Mr. Magnoff. I remember very rarely having the opportunity to actually present um, a debate, articulate kind of process. Uh, at St. Michael's, those things, as Mr. Magnoff has said, have been embedded right from year seven, right through to year 13. Um, thank you for joining us this afternoon. I hope, as I said, that's been useful. Uh, I would just kind of like to point in a few directions. As you can see there, our Twitter feed uh, is coming, uh, is, uh, a banner is on the screen as I speak. And that kind of gives you all the kind of latest news and updates about what's happening in St. Michael. So please feel free to have a look at that and just to keep up to date with what's going on here. I'm also going to just put up our contact addressed at St. Michael's there. If you've got any questions that have not been answered this uh, this, this afternoon, contact at michaels.org.uk. And, and also, these, all of this will be available. So this presentation will be available on our web, website. There will be a link on our website for, um, uh, for our kind of new year six parents and carers. So please have a look at that at your own, in your own time if you felt that, you know, obviously there are lots of information that you've had to kind of decipher this afternoon. Uh, thank you very much, and we look forward to seeing you next week if you are interested in the SCN um, um, presentation. And we also next Wednesday have our final presentation, which is our year 11 um, prefects and ambassadors, and they kind of are going to embody what Mr. Magnoff was just talking about, that being able to present, speak to parents using a, a, a platform which is still quite unusual and um, familiar to them, a webinar, but you'll see how articulately they kind of do that just giving you some information about the college in general and their own experiences having been here for the last four and a half years. Thank you very much for your time. And we look forward to working with you, hopefully, uh, through from September onwards. Have a lovely afternoon. Thank you.